And our first speaker of this conference is Andrei Teleman. He's from Institute of Mathematics de, Mar de, Mar de Marseille. Uh, and uh, his talk is here, you, everyone see it. It's about extensions theorem for holomorphic bundles on complex manifolds with boundary. Andrei. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like first to thank the organizers, of course, for the invitation to give a talk. Uh, I'm really very honored to attend this conference and I'm looking forward to participate in person in Ukraine to a future edition. Um, so, first of all, when I um, uh, came to, to the decision to, to, to inscribe as a participant uh, and to suggest um, a talk in this conference, I was not uh, first sure that my topic really fits in um, uh, in the in the topics of um, of the, the, the general thematics of the um, of the conference because as you'll see my talk will be rather about analytic and algebraic methods in geometry than algebraic that uh, and geometric methods of analysis but afterwards, I realized that many other speakers, including uh, uh, many uh, Ukrainian colleagues, um, will also have uh, geometric, geometric uh, uh, topics. They will speak about geometric problems, and some of them will also use analysis for solving their geometric uh, problems, as uh, I will. Uh, so... <laughs> My talk will have uh, three sections, and maybe I will tell from the beginning that I will not insist on technical details, on technical proofs. Uh, my formula will be simple and written in a global, compact way. I try to, um, to, to explain the importance, the consequences and uh, some details about the history of these details, not about technical proofs. So the first section is about the Kobashi correspondence on closed complex manifolds. By closed, I mean compact without boundary. This is a classical topic in mathematical gauge theory, which had important, I would say, uh, fundamental consequences in uh, differential topology. Uh, I will explain uh, this. So the Kobash hitching on, com on closed complex manifolds. So let's start with this and see what is this about. So we'll fix a closed complex manifold uh, and G a Hermitian metric on X. So G is, uh, one can see it as a Riemannian metric, which is compatible in a well-known sense, sense with the complex structure. Um, I will denote by omega g the associated Keller form. Uh, this is always defined uh, even if g is not Keller. Yeah? So the condition, so g is Keller if and only if this, by definition, if and only if this omega g is closed. And I will also denote by this lambda g the joint, the joint uh, operator of the multiplication by omega g. The multiplication by omega g, as you see, increase, so acts on the space of PQ forms, increasing the degrees on uh, both the components. And um, one can uh, define in a natural way the joint operator. They are both order zero operators. Uh, so the joint um, operator lambda g acts in the opposite sense will drop both index indices. And now comes the main, uh, um, I would say the first important definition of my talk. What is a Hermitian Einstein metric on holomorphic bundle? So I will fix holomorphic bundle of rank R on X. And uh, a Hermitian metric H on E will be called Hermitian Einstein if there is a constant C such that the following equation holds. You see the equation which is written there. Uh, I lambda G, so uh, of FH, FH is the curvature. So I explain immediately as is written here immediately. So FH 
is the curvature of the chain connection of H. This is a fundamental construction in complex differential geometry. Uh, we have a holomorphic bundle. As soon as we fix a Hermitian metric on this holomorphic bundle, we can define in a natural way what is called the churn connection uh, of the of H, yeah. So the holomorphic structure being fixed. In fact, this churn connection depends on the pair, so the holomorphic structure and on the Hermitian structure H. So it's a unique unitary connection, unitary with respect to H, H unitary connection. Um, which is compatible with holomorphic, uh, with holomorphic structure in the sense that uh, the zero one uh, component of the corresponding operator co uh, coincides with the Dolbo operator of the holomorphic structure. So anyway, this is a fundamental well-known construction in a differential complex geometry. So I say it again, we have an holomorphic bundle as soon as we fix a Hermitian metric, a Hermitian structure on it, we can construct in a natural way, um, a unitary connection, which is called the churn connection of the pair, yeah, of the pair, so holomorphic structure paired with H. And FH is a standard notation uh, for the curvature of this uh, churn connection. And as is written there, is an endomorphism valued two form on X. In fact, one can prove that is of type 1-1. One, one. So the compatibility condition uh, tells us this. Um, so lambda g, so so it's a type one one as I said. So lambda g drops both both indices. So what we get, we get simply an endomorphism. Yeah, an endomorphism, and uh, uh, in fact, this endomorphism will be anti-Hermitian. With multiplied with i, will be a Hermitian endomorphism. So the equation you see, in fact, is a, an equality between two Hermitian. Um, endomorphisms, global endomorphisms of E. This is the Hermitian-Einstein equation. Maybe I would say that many of these mathematical notions I will use have roots in physics. So, so as the terminology suggests. Okay, so if this is the case, so if such, if, if this uh, if this condition is satisfied, so if H is Hermitian-Einstein and satisfies uh, the formula I, um, I, I wrote in the definition, then in fact one can say one can say uh, what is the constant C. One can uh, one can specify the the constant C. This C is called the Einstein constant, as as, as I said. So uh, this theory is related to the. Einstein uh, uh, general relativity. Um, and as you see, the constant C, in fact, can be prescribed. So if, if we know that, uh, that H is Hermit Einstein, we can say what is C. And I wrote there the formula for this constant. So it depends only of E and is, uh, I mean, a constant, which is not uh, so important. Yeah, a constant, a multiplicative constant. So this fraction multiplied with the degree with respect to G of E. And um, the degree of G, I wrote the formula for the degree in the, let's say, I would say most popular, most, most known uh, case, namely when G scalar. In this case, one can see that the degree is a topological invariant. So one, how we, one can obtain this degree, one takes the first chain class of, uh, of E, uh, multiplies with the um, cohomology class of, uh, of the Keller form, because now we are in a um, Keller case, power n minus one, one obtains in this way um, uh, um, a cohomology class of uh, let's, a maximal degree, a degree to n, and uh, one estimates, evaluates this cohomology class on the fundamental class of X in homology, and one obtains a real number, and besides is a degree. So as you see in the Keller case, this degree is a topological invariant. And okay, so in order to avoid technical difficulties, we'll, uh, for the moment, we'll assume that G is Keller, so for simplicity, so in this way, you know that the Einstein constant has a topological character. And uh, if H is Hermit Einstein, one can a priori say, what is C? Well, okay. 
Now, uh, a fundamental theorem in mathematical gauge theory uh, states that uh, E admits a Hermitian Einstein metric in if and only if it is polystable. So this is a, a notion which I will define um, immediately. So um, first of all, one defines stability, the stability condition. It's a very important in complex geometry and algebraic geometry. This, this concept, solomorphic bundle on X is called stable. If it satisfies a certain monotony property with respect to the current subsheaves, unfortunately, it's not sufficient to require this condition only for sub bundles. Unfortunately, one has also to consider current subsheaves, which can be regarded, let's say, in an intuitive way as, as, as sub bundles with singularities yeah, in a certain sense. So it's stable if on any current subsheaf of uh, rank between the rank of E and zero. So, yeah, we have the following uh, inequality. So, this quotient, degree of a rank, this is called slope in complex geometry, the slope of F. So we require that for any such f, the slope of f is uh, lower, is smaller than the slope of e. Yeah, and here, of course, I have to, to be honest and to warn you that uh, the degree of a coherent sheaf I did not define yet, yeah, because I defined the degree only uh, for a bundle. It's not very difficult in complex geometry. One can define the determinant line bundle of any coherent sheaf and it's a line bundle, so really a bundle. One defines the degree of F to be the degree of determinant line bundle. Okay, and polystable is the concept which uh, comes in the Kobashi-Hitchin correspondence. If E is isomorphic to a direct sum of uh, stable bundles uh, of, of the same slope, so such that all the slopes of the summons coincide uh, with the slope of E. So these are the concepts. You see, what is the significance? Maybe we'll say, okay, this is a, a technical theorem. What is the importance of it? Uh, uh, this theorem had very, very fundamental consequences. And I will tell you why. Um, if you see the condition admitting a Hermit-Einstein metric appears to be a, an, um, a differential geometric analytical problem because there we have in fact a differential equation, nonlinear differential equation. So Hermit-Einstein is Hermit-Einstein metric. This is a analytic global analytical object. Yeah. On the other side, polystable, as you see, is a pure complex geometry. Complex geometry. Now we, it's about a condition which concerns the subsheaves of F, the coherent subsheaves. Now we are in complex geometry. If X is an algebraic variety, then in fact we are within algebraic geometry. <laughs> so it's exciting. And I said the importance of this uh, Kobashi chain correspondence. So, first, it shows that the existence of a Hermit Einstein metric, which appears again to be a, a global analytical uh, property of E, in fact has a geometric complex geometric character, is a complex geometric ca character. So, in order to decide if E admits or not a Hermitian Einstein metric, what you have to do is to look at the current subsheaves of E. So they look as E to E as a complex geometric object. Now, but the, let's say the most spectacular uh, consequence, and in fact, for this, for this second, for this consequence, Donaldson proved the first version of the kobashi in correspondence is that it yields a uh, homomorphism of moduli spaces. I will very, very briefly explain below um, in a very, very brief and non-technical way. <laughs> so in general, in mathematical gauge theory, when I say moduli space, one should understand by this a quotient of solutions of certain PDEs on manifolds, yeah, PDEs, so global PDEs, non general nonlinear PDEs on manifolds, factorized by the natural symmetry group of the equations. And this quotient plays uh, an important role uh, in, in mathematical gauge theory. Yeah, has, and these moduli spaces have been used with important consequences, as we'll explain. So what we do, 
This time we fix not a holomorphic bundle. So please note that this time I use uh, a Roman E. Uh, for me, this means it tries to be a pedagogical convention in choosing the notations. Uh, this means that it's a differentiable object. So this time we fix a differentiable Hermitian bundle. So E is just a, a vector, I mean, a differentiable vector bundle and H is Hermitian metric on, on it. And first, we denote by this calligraphic A of E at H, the space of all the unitary connections yeah, on, on, on E. This uh, infinite dimensional Frechet space. Yeah, and we uh, distinguish the subspace, as I said, of Hermitian-Einstein connections. This is by definition, the space of unitary connections, which satisfies precisely the uh, Hermitian Einstein uh, equation, which I showed you already, uh, but also is of type uh, whose curvature is of type 1, 1. In fact, I mentioned already that uh, in the previous framework, the curvature is of type 1, 1. So this is the space of Hermitian Einstein connections on EH. And we see, it, so the conditions you see here, in fact, are complicated nonlinear PDEs. Yeah, if we look at A, A as an unknown in a in an infinite dimension in a fresh space, what, you, what I wrote there is a complicated system of nonlinear equations. Well, uh, we factorize this uh, space of uh, solutions, so the space of Hermitian Einstein uh, 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 connections by the natural symmetry group, as I said, and this is the automorphism group of, uh, of E as a Hermitian bundle, so of unitary automorphisms, and we obtain the uh, moduli space of Hermitian Einstein connections. Well, I said that uh, our Kovacic in correspondence, the theorem I mentioned, yields an isomorphism of moduli spaces. Uh, what I mean, the Kovacic in correspondence yields a homeomorphism defined on this moduli space of Hermitian Einstein connections on EH to a complex geometric object, the moduli space of polystable structures on E. Yeah, so this MPST is a moduli space of polystable holomorphic structure, structures on E. And interestingly, this is a complex space. Yeah, in particular, it's finitely dim dimensional. Moreover, I would say that if our um, Keller manifold is in fact algebraic, in, in the sense that G is not only a Keller metric, but it's also a Hodge metric. Yeah, for instance, what you get if you have an algebraic variety embedded in a projective space, then automatically what you get is not only a Keller metric, but also uh, a Koch metric. And uh, then will be the mod this modular space will be really um, a quasi projective manifold. So the, as I said, on the left, uh, uh, on the left side, you have a, an analytical object defined as a modular space of solutions of complicated PDEs. And on the right side, you have a complex geometric object, which becomes um, algebraic if uh, the, Kel the given Keller manifold is algebraic, is projective algebraic. This, first of all, this homeomorphism played a fundamental role in Donaldson theory. It is a famous theory developed in the 80s. Yeah, this is, uh, um, uh, the, in fact, the, the, uh, the Fields Medal of Donaldson in the 80s. Um, uh, it was used for Donaldson for the computation, first computations of the so-called Donaldson polynomial invariants of smooth four manifolds. And with this invariance, he succeeded to prove that there are um, homeomorphic, so pairs of four manifolds, close four manifolds, which are homeomorphic, but not uh, diffeomorphic. This was uh, a sensational result in the 80s, which was followed by many other examples of the same type. Um, and uh, another, a new, completely different application. So uh, first of all, this has been generalized to the non-Kellerian framework. So all these, even in not only the existence theorem, but also the um, isomorphism of moduli spaces. Here I wrote several references, Li Yao and the book I wrote with Martin Lübcke. Um, and I use this in the non-Kellerian framework to prove existence of curves of uh, minimal class seven surfaces for B2 in this range, I, I cannot, I, I could not, uh, I mean, do more. But anyway, uh, in this way, uh, I made some progress on the classification of this class of complex surfaces, yeah, which is not completely understood. So as I said, what I want to, to I mean, to emphasize is that these results are not only I mean, technical, let's say, 
and beautiful uh, from our natural, from our, let's say, uh, uh, mathematical point of view, but have really uh, have applications and uh, some of them, I would say, um, fundamental. For instance, uh, Donaldson computations of uh, polynomial invariance. Uh, now, I like to, uh, I'll come to the main uh, part of my, uh, of my talk, namely, what is the correspondence, the Kovacic correspondence on complex manifolds with boundary? Uh, this is also uh, a discovery of Donaldson you know, several years ago. So I wrote the reference here uh, with an interesting article, which in fact I discovered recently, to be honest, boundary value problems for young Mills fields. Donaldson proves uh, a new version of the Kobashian correspondence, this time on compact complex manifolds with non-empty boundary. So let X bar be a compact complex manifold with non-empty boundary, and let J be a Keller metric on, uh, on X bar as before. So we'll, we'll fix in the Keller, we'll, we'll remain for the moment in the Keller framework. Uh, again, E be holomorphic bundle on the whole manifold with boundary. And I will let uh, this chi be a Hermitian metric on the restriction of A to the boundary. So maybe you realize already that what I'm going to do is to, to, to state uh, the Dirichlet problem. So I fixed the metric on the boundary. And indeed, uh, Donaldson proves there exists a unique admission metric H on, on, on E. I would have uh, written uh, uh, calligraphic E, I will, I will correct this. Uh, satisfying the known Hermit-Einstein uh, con condition, but with constant Einstein constant zero, one can impose that, and uh, which coincides with the prescribed uh, Hermitian metric on the boundary, with chi on the boundary. So <clears throat> compared with the analog result on closed manifolds, these are here important remarks to, to, to make. Um, Donaldson also explained this in, 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 uh, with a lot of energy. The results, in fact, uh, looks stronger than what we have on, uh, on closed manifolds. First of all, uh, the existence holds always, we have no condition on E, non-stability, polystability condition is necessary. This is the, the new fundamental new uh, phenomenon. First of all, we can impose always that uh, the co Einstein constant to be zero. And first we can prescribe, so the value of H on the, on the boundary. Yeah. And moreover, we have unicity, which was not, is not true in the, on, the clo on closed manifolds. So uh, the result appears, in fact, also the proof is simpler. So or maybe we can say, how is this possible? We have a more complicated problem. Yeah, we have manifold with non-empty boundary. However, uh, for analytical reasons, yeah, which are very well explained in Donaldson's paper, the, the, uh, I mean, the, the mathematics, I mean, the content of the result is, and the, also the proof are simpler. The results are stronger, the proof are simpler. Okay, so a metric H satisfying this condition, so Hermit-Einstein with Einstein constant zero is called by Donaldson Hermitian Young Mills. And so from an analytical point of view, that's why at the beginning of my talk, I said um, my talk is rather about um, analytical methods in geometry than geometric methods in analysis. So in fact, if you look at this map, which uh, maps H on I lambda G of H is a nonlinear second order elliptic operator. So Donaldson's results, as you see, can be regarded as an existence and unicity theorem for a nonlinear Dirichlet, Dirichlet problem. Uh, it's very interesting also uh, to look at the paper to understand the proof. So uh, Donaldson uses, uh, heat flow, a nonlinear, a parabolic equation, an evolution equation for H. And it proves long time existence and that the limit of H, the, the solution yeah, of these parabolic equations when T goes to infinity 
is precisely a solution of our equation. Okay. Interestingly, as in the case of closed manifolds, the new version of the Kobashi-Chin correspondence yields a homeomorphism of moduli spaces, so have, has, uh, let's say, geometric consequences. And what is the correspondence? Very interestingly, it's, it's really the, the analogy is it, it, it's, it's very beautiful. So what we fix, a differentiable vector bundle on X bar, again, so Keller manifold with non-empty boundary, yeah. Um, and we fix this time a Hermitian metric on E. Yeah? So we, we forget about the, so our object now, the, the input is no longer an homomorphic bundle, but a Hermitian bundle. <clears throat> okay, and now we can consider the moduli space of pairs, A theta consisting of hermitian young mills connection on A E H and unitary trivialization on the restriction to the boundary. So this method to add an additional object, so we, before we had only connections, moduli space of connections. Now we add, we form a couple uh, formed by A, the previous variable, and a supplementary, a new one. People, I mean, in geometry calls that framing in the sense we complicate the problem, but this is the, I mean, in this framework, this is correct way of, of, of proceeding. So instead of looking only at uh, uh, of, uh, connections, hermitian young means connections up to Gauge equivalence, we look at Gauge equivalence classes of pairs, A theta, uh, where theta, as I said, is unitary trivialization of the restriction to the boundary. And on the other hand, uh, you see, now we have only complex geometric objects. We look at pairs, E this time calligraphic, yeah? E and Tau, consisting of holomorphic structure on E and the smooth trivialization of the restriction to the boundary. So here, careful, or this Tau is no longer required to be unitary. Yeah? It's the arbitrary trivialization. Okay, and uh, now uh, um, Donaldson states that the two moduli spaces I don't define formally, but again, you factorize but, uh, by the group of automorphisms of E, yeah? and by the group of the symmetry of the two, of the two uh, classes of object, and you obtain a natural homeomorphism between these moduli spaces. And uh, uh, one can state this uh, homeomorphism in a very compact way, which I'm afraid only in English is possible, um, in other languages also to, I mean, to, to uh, write mathematical statements in such a compact way. The moduli space of boundary framed Hermitian young mills connections. Yeah, this means we frame, we add this trivialization on the boundary. Yeah, on EH can be identified with a moduli space of boundary framed holomorphic structures on E. So the fact that you add these trivializations on the boundary, in English you can, uh, I mean, codify only saying boundary framed. We frame your objects with trivializations on the boundary. New, this time, both moduli spaces are infinite dimensional, interestingly. And uh, Donaldson, also it's interesting to note that uh, uh, many years, in fact, afterwards, yeah, so we see in 2005, uh, Donaldson theorem has been generalized to arbitrary Hermitian to the arbitrary Hermitian framework. So no Kellerianity condition needed for uh, for for G. Yeah? So just take a Hermitian many a Hermitian metric on X. Uh, in the same journal, yeah, in the same journal of geometry and physics. Um, so uh, because the analytical part, so this existence, this Dirichlet, yeah? this existence and unicity for the Dirichlet problem holds in the same way one uses uh, this existence and unicity theorem to prove again uh, an isomorphism of uh, moduli spaces, precisely as in the Keller case considered by Donaldson. So you can identify the two moduli spaces of boundary framed objects on arbitrary Hermitian manifolds with an empty boundary. And now comes the point. Uh, in the special case, when this, I mean, uh, I would say the, for an, a complex analyst, if you mention to him a complex manifold with boundary, 
First of all, he will think of a sticky pseudo-convex domain in Cn, for example, a ball, for instance, in, in a ball yeah, in Cn. And um, in this case, interestingly, one obtains as a consequence, also uh, considered by Donaldson, an interesting geometric interpretation of the, an infinite dimensional quotient group. I, I'm sorry, I'm sure that uh, my presentation contains several technical definitions and notations. Uh, I try to slow down when I, when this, let's say more complicated objects uh, appear. So what we do, it's very, very easy. We look very easy, it's natural. It's not easy, but it's natural. We look at uh, the space of all smooth maps on the bound, defined on the boundary with values in this complex Lie group. Well, and you factorize by those maps of this type, which extend smoothly on X bar, but being holomorphic on the X, on the interior. One, called them, one can call them, let's say, formally holomorphic on the whole X bar. But in fact, the holomorphic condition is really, in the classical sense, it's satisfied only on X. So we factorize the group of smooth maps defined on the boundary with values in G G GLRC by the group of those such maps which extend smoothly and formally holomorphically to X bar. Okay. Formally holomorphically means holomorphic uh, on X. So it means that the cauchy riemann equations, in fact, are valid on the whole X bar. Yeah? But at the boundary points, you cannot, you cannot prove, for instance, analyticity. Okay. <clears throat> This quotient had been considered and intensively studied uh, in, uh, in the special case when, uh, when X bar is just the disk, yeah? the closure of the disk in C. So this is a classical quotient. So this quotient, um, in, I mean, had been studied, considered intensively in the so-called loop group theory. Yeah? So this is a theory developed in the 80s by Siegel, Presley, and Atia. Uh, and this quotient appeared in this theory. Um, okay, so what is Donaldson's new framework? So you see Donaldson, um, what he does, this is a, let's say, substantial generalization yeah, of the quotient considered in a loop group theory. He takes X bar, the closure of a strictly pseudo convex domain in CN. Uh, as again, you see, they are complicated, but I repeat it. Uh, o infinity, this is uh, the group of uh, such smooth maps, which are formally holomorphic yeah, on X bar. This can be considered as a subgroup of, of, the, of, the, of the first one, of this one, yeah, considered as a subgroup. So, so you take the group of uh, smooth formally holomorphic uh, GLRC valued maps on X bar, which can be identified yeah, you know, by the restriction map, via yeah, the restriction map with a subgroup of uh, the group of smooth maps uh, defined on the boundary, yeah, the other restriction map. Um, and now uh, this uh, important colony of Donaldson, important, I, I, I would say very interesting, yeah? there exists an actual bijection between the moduli space of boundary framed Hermitian Young means connections on the trivial UR bundle on X bar. Uh, and this quotient, you know, one can, one, maybe I, one can, uh, let's say, read it in the other way. One has this infinite dimensional quotient, yeah, which is a natural quotient to study. And Donaldson says, look, this very complicated quotient in this very general framework can be identified with a moduli space of boundary framed uh, Hermish Einstein connections. So it gives a completely new interpretation of this quotient. And in the particular case mentioned above, which appears in uh, loop group theory, one obtains a famous fact as a consequence, but as, as a two line consequence, yeah? one obtains a famous factorization theorem uh, known in loop group theory. Well, so therefore the above corollary is a strong generalization of an important classical theorem. But you see, if you go from the disk in C to a, I mean, to a, an arbitrary pseudo convex domain in, in CN, this is really a strong generalization. Now come to the point, um, what are the ingredients uh, used in, in the proof? Of course, the isomorphism between the two moduli space of boundary framed objects, which I explained uh, above. Yeah? This is in fact the main ingredient. 
And, and also uh, an, a classical ingredient, Grauer's classification theorem for holomorphic bundles on Stein manifolds. So Grauer proved long time ago that um, the um, classification of holomorphic bundles on Stein manifolds coincide with the with the topological classification. The holomorphic classification coincides with topological classification of Stein manifolds. And the following extension result for holomorphic bundles on strict pseudo-convex domain. Um, let X bar be the closure of a relatively compact strictly pseudo-convex domain, so with a smooth boundary in CN, and E I consider just um, um, So, excuse me, this smooth should be removed. This is a topologically trivial. Uh, the point is here, uh, I, uh, I was not sure if you write smoothly trivial, topological trivial. In fact, the two conditions are equivalent. So we consider the topologically trivial holomorphic bundle on X bar, yeah? So it's, it, it's smooth, of course, being holomorphic is smooth, but E, as my convention, notation convention um, uh, says, it's an homomorphic object. So I consider a holomorphic bundle, which is topologically or smoothly trivial, yeah, on X bar. So E is holomorphic bundle. Then E extends holomorphically to an open neighborhood U of X bar in CN. This is a proposition stated by Donaldson. And now comes the surprise. Concerning this existence result, Donaldson writes in his article, it's very interesting to, to, to read this article. It's full of ideas, but, but attention, a surprise. He says, the author has unfortunately not been able to find such a result in the literature. And now he goes forward. In the appendix, we'll give an ad hoc argument covering the case we are most interested in, namely when n is two. But the result is almost certainly true in general. So for the rest of discussions in this paragraph, we will not uh, explicitly restrict to do variables. In other way, uh, Donaldson states the proposition as I did in full generality, but he proves it only for Innis 2. <clears throat> but formally speaking, the stated corollary is proved in Donaldson's article only for Innis 2. You see, the, I mean, the general case is missing. Because as I said, the proof contains, uh, the proof is based on three ingredients. This is the isomorphism between the two moduli spaces of boundary framed objects, Grauer classification, and the extension result. The extension result is stated in general, but is proved only for n is two. And the proof essentially uses n is two. Does really, Donaldson also says, does not work in a general case. Look, so um, I have only, I think, uh, something like two or three minutes. Um, now I come to the point of my talk. So in a recent article, I proved the general case, but a more general version of the needed extension result. Yeah? Uh, so the extension theorem, which you can find, is a very recent article on the archive. So let M be a complex manifold replacing CN. I take X be an open submanifold of N uh, with closure has X bar, of course, it's relatively compact, so the closure is also compact, has smooth, strictly pseudo-convex boundary in M. So we see much more general. Yeah? So CN is replaced by M, and uh, I take a, an arbitrary uh, strictly pseudo-convex domain in M. And also, the symmetry group is no longer GLLN, it's an arbitrary complex Lie group, and I take a, dif uh, a differentiable uh, principal G bundle on M, and geolomorphic structure on its restriction to X bar, yeah? Um, so precisely as in the Donaldson's extension theorem, well, in this very general framework, I proved that there exists an open neighborhood of M prime of X bar in M. Otherwise, uh, this holomorphic structure extends to a neighborhood M prime of X bar in M. So, yeah, see? So there exists an open neighborhood uh, M prime of X bar in M and holomorphic structure G, G prime uh, on the restriction of Q to M prime, which extends G. Yeah, so I explained just briefly now. So in the special case when M is CN and G is a uh, group GLRC, one obtains the essential result needed in Donaldson's article. So in particular, uh, the stated corollary is proved in full generality. So now combining 
I mean, a, a special case of uh, this extension theorem uh, with, uh, with Donaldson's arguments, then we get uh, a, full, a full proof, a complete proof of uh, this beautiful uh, isomorphism uh, theorem, yeah, you see here. But not only this, uh, not only this, um, not only this, because the extension theorem holds so generally, yeah? So I able to, uh, to, to generalize, yeah? Uh, to, to get a, 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 a similar description uh, of the corresponding quotient in a much more general framework. So uh, look, I take now G to be the complexification of a compactly group, and X bar, instead of taking a, a, pseudo, a pseudo convex domain in CN, I take any arbit an arbitrary compact Stein manifold with boundary, and G a Hermitian metric on X bar, then again, the whole phenomenon happens, namely the corresponding infinite dimensional quotient. So smooth maps with values in G, yeah, de uh, defined, I mean, uh, on the boundary, varied by those maps which extend formally holomorphic on X bar. Look, this quotient can be identified with the modular space of boundary framed Hermitian Einstein connections on the trivial bundle. So I'm already one minute out of time. So uh, I would like now, uh, of course, I prepare several uh, details about the proof, but uh, I knew that I will be will not be possible to to explain them. We can find all the details in uh, in in the article. Uh, also, let's say um, a lemma, which is another extension theorem, which is needed the proof. But I will uh, uh, go to the end, and I will thank you very much for your attention. Uh, Andre, thank you very much. Thank you. Let us thank the speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Andre, do you have, please, any questions, remarks, comments? Uh, Andre, can you, can you show the, the last result or maybe the, the slide number nine what about uh, the, the quotient map? Yes. The, the generalization, yes. Yeah, I, I, yes, yes. So this is the last, yes. yeah, maybe, maybe you, you, I mean the general version of this portion map, you mean but this? The general, the general approach to, to this. So uh, is this space, a space of smooth maps from the boundary to G or the space of this uh, holomorphic bound, no, maps which are holomorphic on the boundary, they, are, they have natural topologies, Whitney topologies. Yes. Yes, it just always, always these are uh, endowed with the quotient topology. Yes, yes, and the question, is, the question is the following: so if you have, you have an, uh, a map from, uh, so this is a homomorphism. Uh, um, the, you have C infinity is a group, and O infinity is also a subgroup, and therefore yes. when you take a, you, the quotient map is a map into the space of uh, no, space of um, adjacent classes. And this quotient has natural topo. The question is, does this, uh, this uh, quotient map has local sections? Ah, this is a very good question. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. And I'm afraid neither does Donaldson, because to be honest, Donaldson, in fact, uh, doesn't only mentions bijections. You see, Donaldson is much more modest in his, in his claim. Because and what, what I, Yes, I, I don't know if it, it is a good question if this, uh, I have to think about it, if this question, because, uh, but as I said, I, this would be interesting if you want to endow the quotient, let's say, with a Fréché manifold structure. But if you want just a topological space, then we endow it with a quotient topology and it's over. But I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I, I have to think very carefully. I think then when X is a disk, this is part of the, yes, I remember that. That is part of the theory as a loop group theory uh, uh, has an alternative descriptions of this quotient and one does obtain manifold and this man the manifold structure on the quotient uh, implicitly shows that you have sections beyond this manifold structure is obtained with the charts of the quotient is obtained by taking sections. But I am not sure what happens if you go in higher dimension with X. And as I said, Donaldson doesn't say any word about that. So in, the, in this sense, the fact that I say homeomorphism, this is that I followed the bijection obtained by Donaldson, and I am convinced that uh, that it's uh, be be continuous. Uh, but it's a very interesting question. I have to say that also that these quotients uh, in the higher dimensional case, so when X is not one dimensional, 
Uh, this equation is absolutely new. I think only by Donaldson has been considered once in this article and afterwards, to my knowledge, completely forgotten. So I came back to this, but I think there is nothing in the literature about this. So if you are interested, I think uh, might be a very, very, very interesting uh, topic to attack. Because why, why I'm asking, just, just one moment, why I'm asking, because if it is a, a section, then this map is a, is a locally trivial uh, principal vibration. Exactly, and, yeah, exactly. The, the consequ at, at least from homotopy theory, the consequence that you will have a, a sequence of homotopy groups. Exactly. But, and then because C infinity from boundary to G can be attacked by very standard methods, uh, yes, of course, exactly, because it's a pure, let's say, instead of same infinity, if you get, uh, if you replace by smooths, you obtain, I'm sure, the same homotopy type. Yes, I'm yes, sure. and therefore you can try to, no, it is possible to uh, relate the homotopy groups of O infinity and with the space of this, uh, of this type of connections, as this would be very good. We, we exactly, would be, very, but knowing that, that uh, I'm afraid that will be difficult to say something about the homotopy type of this subgroup, I'm afraid, I, I don't know. Yeah, but anyway, we'll get a, a yeah, long exact homotopy sequence. And if you, uh, if you uh, are able to compute this, this guy, I mean, the homotopy groups of this, then my, uh, maybe one can get information about the homotopy group of the quotient, which will, will be wonderful. Mm -hmm. But as I said, somehow I chose a topic which could be somehow, uh, I mean, which provide, might provide topics, research topics. And as I said, I was so happy to discover this paper of Donaldson uh, and, uh, Mm, uh, he was, I think, again, the first who, who considered uh, this quotient in the higher dimension and afterwards has abandoned, but in my opinion, has abandoned because the topic is difficult. Yeah? And, uh, but in principle, this implicitly means that uh, any, any uh, let's say, result you get on such quotients uh, will be originally new, yeah? mm -hmm. in my opinion. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you. Let us it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Thank you.